Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video, it's another video based on the scales of Dominion. I know I've been doing a lot of content. I, I mentioned I was gonna do it, but um, today's video is an opinion, my opinions on this weapon, right? So if you have been in international discord, I've been lurking there, not well lurking, but I've been popping in every now and then in the fire channel and giving my thoughts on the weapon, right? So I haven't done this in a video format yet, and I wanted to give it a little bit more um, exposure. So I decided to make this a video. Now I'm gonna use the help of my handy dandy notebook, AKA notepad to put my thoughts in paper. So you guys can either skip watching this video to the end, um, cause not many people wanna hear my voice. My voice is not that great. Uh, though I would recommend listening to the points. Um, I'm not sure about time stamp, time stamp every point but you should listen to the point so you may get a little bit more context, though I will try to write it out as best as I possibly can to give people a little bit more uh, leeway on that. But yeah, I want to make everything explained with some text points so that you know we keep everything on track and I don't get uh, lost in my words. Now, this weapon is very controversial. because I did mention it being meta-defining um, in my, I think a video three days ago, two days ago. So, you know, I want to give my thoughts on it so people can understand where I'm coming from and what I'm thinking about when I think about this weapon. I, I, my thought process is probably a little bit different than the average player it's because I, I play the game a little bit more than most people, a lot more than most people. So um, that's the way I'm looking at things. So hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from and uh, we can hopefully clear the air with this weapon. So. The very first question that I that I think most people ask is um, one: Does this weapon grid need? I'm put the need to cap. So is this a requirement to run this grid? Right? Do you need to hit damage cap for this grid to be worth it? And the answer is yes. It's useless if you don't cap. You're probably wondering why I say it's useless if you don't cap. So generally, the, this grid is less power than your average grid. For example, if you were to look at the actual in-game stats, it's about 300K, I believe, 400K in that range for this grid. Now, com compared to other grids that are in the 500K range, the 600K range, that's a lot lower damage output but you don't necessarily do less damage because of how much defense the boss has, right? So if you didn't know in this game, different bosses have different amount of defense. So depending on the content you're doing, as long as you're hitting damage cap, that's all that matters, right? So example, you may have seen me do uh, Nez, Nezaha, whatever it's called. Um, that rate has very low defense. And because of that, it allows me to cap relatively easily, even though the actual damage output of the, the grid is not nearly as high as my like five katana grid or six katana grid. So yes, you need to cap, because generally if you're not capping, you're doing less than a more completed grid with more firepower. So especially if the grid already, if your, comp your competition is capping. Now, Magna is a different case, you know, we, everybody, talks about magnifier that's a different case i don't have any magna grids anymore so i can't really talk about it anymore but it's a it's a totally different case compared to this one um now the second question that i see uh this question is very very common but here it is is the grid free to play or free to play friendly so um when it when people ask if the grid free to play like can you build a free to play grid no you cannot is the free to, is this weapon free to play friendly no the reason this weapon is not free to play friendly is because you're looking for their top tier weapons in your LD and generally the top tier weapons in your LD are gotcha weapons that means your stamina weapons your Weapons with dual mods like Rosetta Dagger, um, those weapons are all pay to win. 
I know it's unfortunate to say that, but no, it's not friendly because you need Dama bars. Now, do you need a lot of weapons? No, you don't need a lot of weapons, but you need the weapon and they're not easy to get. So is it free to play friendly? Not really, um, especially if you need multiple weapons from different gotchas. Oh man, that's the worst because <laughs> Oh, you, I'm pretty sure most people here have been in a situation like, oh man, I don't want a Spark Legfest banner. It got bad weapons, right? I'm pretty sure you heard it from somebody. So it's, it's unfortunate when you have two weapons in different gacha pools, it's, that's the worst. Like, oh man, that's, that's actually the worst. So no, it's not free to play. No, um, requires multiple gacha weapons full limit break so <laughs> um hopefully i can get that one out the way really fast now another question is dark opus um what type of okay so you probably noticed in my grid with my fire videos that the opus is actually magna and you probably have questions as to why that's one, it's not optimal. Um, the reason that the Opus is actually Magna is because currently I don't have a Primal Opus. That's why in the, the, like, I think the very last video I just made, I called it Poverty Anubis, right? The reason that it's Poverty is that I'm not running the optimal Opus and that's a huge damage loss because you're not getting that double modifier boost from Agony or may that be a different summon like let's say Titan, Zeph, Varuna, Hades, Zeus, all those things, right? You're not getting the double modifier boost. So you need to have the right primal for your, um, or Magna, you did Magna variance with this weapon, right? You've seen the Celeste build, the, uh, Yig build. I believe somebody's doing Leviathan and Colossus, right? So there are builds for it. So for Magna as well, but Magna, you mm, gonna have a hard time with that. So you need the right the right um primal opus my fault you need the right opus for your uh your summon so primal equal primal dark opus and magna equal magna dark opus so hopefully i have to get that right Make make a little space between each, so it's a little bit easier for people to to read it. Without the space, it can be a little bit confusing. So, four. Now, this one is very important. This is probably the most important point. Uh, I'll probably put a star point to it because it's most important. Is ultra limit break dark opus needed? Now, this one is very, 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 very important. And the reason being that this is the most important weapon in the grid, because this weapon is so powerful, it's the only reason the grid is even feasible. If this weapon was not nearly as powerful as it was, the grid would actually fall apart and be completely worthless. The reason being that it has double mod and uh, usually stamina, what you're looking for, because it gives the strongest boost at full health. And generally, most of the time, you are near full health and lower content. And Magna, um, there may be somebody who's crazy enough to go with the Amity build in Dark. Um, you do have options. I don't. I haven't tried it yet personally, so I can't tell you from my own experience. Though I will eventually get around to trying it. I'm always open to try new things. So you know, I like testing Iran Blue. So we'll. See, I'll see how it works in the future. But is it required? Yes, don't, don't even, uh, don't even try to build without it. So it's re actually required. Don't you, don't even try. Don't, don't, e don't even think about it. It's not even to be a thought in your, in your brain. If you don't have this at the bare minimum done. It's more important than the uh, than the gotcha tier weapons. That's all important is. Yes, gold bars are a problem for many players. I always recommend people to at least do a daily ultimate Bahamut high level. 
people always have the uh you know the excuse for the train and stuff like that i understand people i understand like the lower rank you are getting into trains is a hard thing right so the only way around that is to rank up um either rank up or uh, make your own train it's also a possibility this is not very common but you can make a train higher rank than you are if you didn't know that you can do it people do it very commonly where for example let's say you're rank 160 right you're rank 160 but you want to get like a rank 180 train so people would be rank 160 and put in the title of the boss and make it rank 180 and above you can do this okay now will people join it depends but if there's no other options people will join the train so depending at the time of day you're doing it um, this is an option for people is it worth it I don't know it depends on how like it probably more worth it during prime time could more likely for people to join but it really depends um, I can't guarantee that people will join your lobby it really just depends <laughs> so that's one people to understand that is don't expect people to join but it's an option for people who want to get into the better lobbies but aren't a high enough rank the same thing applies to your actual ultimate Bahamut high level host. If you're rank 130, I, I mean, I was joining rank 130 earlier today on my stream. Like I don't, people generally don't care about your rank if you're the host. So as long as you make the host like the uh, requirement uh, high enough, people who have a high rank will just join your raid and kill it. Five people is more than enough to kill ultimate Bahamut high level. Don't feel bad. Things I would recommend though is bring in Thor and Phalanx. Those two things are more than enough. You don't really have to do damage. I don't, I really, personally, I don't care if you do damage, but if you bring Thor and Phalanx, that helps a ton. So just know that. It also helps to know the raid a little bit, to have an idea of what's going on, at least have like a guide next to you so you don't mess people up. But other than that, um, generally you'd be fine. So gold bar, I know it's a problem for people. And that's like the gate for the people in this grid, but I'm sorry. It's there. That's how it is. Um, people, as people try to avoid it more in the future, um, you're going to get into problems where you're like, you're going to be needing this gold bar for your grid. Now I talked about those things. And now here is the, this question is probably the question that I get the most. And I try to do it in my last video, but how does it perform? And high level, oh, I'll put high level. Uh, I'll put high, I think, I think it's, most people understand HL being high level, right? I would hope. Uh, how to perform in high level content. Um, generally, we're going to be looking at 13 through 15 defense. Uh, sure. So, um, if you didn't know, in this game, different bosses have different defense. So, example, like. Uh, twin elements has 10 defense while twin elements high level has a I believe 13 so depending on the boss you it may have different defense levels the highest being 20 Bahamut high level and five reaches those levels is why you may notice sometimes maybe going to Bahamut high level it feels like you do negative damage because the boss is really tanky. <laughs> so don't feel bad if in some boss fights you feel like your damage is lower than average. It's not you, it's the boss is being really tanky. So now generally lately Guild Wars has been around 12 to 14. Um, so the reason I mentioned high level content is because Guild Wars is around 12 to 14 right now. And I feel a lot of players are looking at that right now. So this question very common um i will put the rates that have around that help so we're gonna put like um magna 2 through i believe team up malice i think team up malice is 15 so now how does it perform it's equal to around three stamina weapon grid without Dark Opus. Um, also let me break. Uh, um,
Okay, so it's around a three stamina weapon in grid without the Dark Opus Ultra Limit Break, and it has a hard time capping consistently. So the reason being is that one, you can't generally in those contents you can't stay at full health due to either pots or um, the boss just doing more damage over time, or it, generally you may have to change the team comp. Right, depending on the team comp you have. It's so depending on the boss fight, you can't like just bring a full DPS team set. So that in those two scenarios, you do have a damage drop. Another thing is that um, outside of your peak damage, so that may be Alon buff, uh, Ogi buffs, Anilla buffs, uh, depending on what build you're running, Fairy buff, if you're dark, so outside of your outside of your buffs where you're like you have no buffs, you'll have a hard time capping. You probably won't even come close to capping. So that's the unfortunate part about it is that without the um without the uh maximum damage output of your team, generally you won't be capping at all, making the grid almost worthless at that point because you're not capping. Now this can change um with Primal Full Limit Break. So this can change right now with Primal Full Limit Break, but currently at the moment, it does not have what is required to hit the highest damage amounts in the harder content with the, high, the higher defense. Guild Wars is a little bit different, and I'll talk about it in a minute. As in the next bulletin point, I will be bringing it up. But, um, Right now, in like magnitude of Team Malice, it may have a harder time capping um, without all your buffs like stacked on it. So just keep that in mind. Um, generally, you don't really want to run this right now in that content, but just keep the just keep it in mind. And for the last bulletin point, this one being the last one, six. What purpose does this? grid serve All right, so where where are you going to be most likely using this grid so the number one and most important um situation being guild wars at slash mr morning rush if you see if you see the word mr it stands for morning rush so it's a very common thing where you let you know like you may wake up depending on where you may live where you like see the enemy crew at 800 mil 900 mil first hour in that's what we call morning rest where everyone in the crew gets online and is ready to grind out as fast as they possibly can do the most amount of damage they can in one hour the point is to scare your opponent you scare them into the, just the thought that if you dare fight me i will blow you up <laughs> i will blow you up so that's like the really important thing about it generally it, this this hour is the most important um it does not always win you a, a fight, but if you are that much faster than your opponent, your opponents generally just give up because they know that they can't match you. <laughs> now you have the people who will grind all day um, looking at you, uh, <coughs> Vanilla. <laughs> you got the people who will grind all day, so it's a, it, 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 that's not fun, but you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hi, Ginger. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got the people who grind all day. So th those, those two scenarios are a little bit different. <laughs> but <laughs> generally, the morning rush is the most important. And you do have your crew buffs on, your attack boost and stuff. So <laughs> I can't wait for them to comment on this. <laughs> Uh, the, so you have the attack boots and stuff. So with the attack boots, you do have inflated damage, allowing you to cap a lot easier in Guild Wars. So that's one purpose of it. The second being Rise of the Beast. Now Rise of the Beast is another content where you have attack boost based on a celestial bonus. Um, because of this, it allows you to cap very easily, and it's having a higher damage cap. It's very, very 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 good <laughs> so it'll probably allow people to clear a lot quicker than they did prior with the higher damage cap um another one being magnus last magna uh high level so uh magna high level has around 12 defense i did a video on it recently with team on malice you probably seen that video so 
you could tell that it had it doesn't have 10 defense um it has 12 so it's a little bit lower it's a little bit higher than 10 but with a completed grid 12 defense is totally manageable and uh, you'll cap no problem um not all the time but you, you'll cap like 90 percent of the time so it should be fine with magna and magna high levels and the very last content you use it for is events meaning uh collab uh story events um proving grounds so. So, stuff like that so like collab story events proving grounds that stuff is not that important currently at the moment obviously you do it for your dailies but it's not something you grind out all day every day so and the last one anything with 10 defense so anything else with 10 defense um can be used with the grid right now so these are the most important things right now where the grid is signing um in the future it can change with full limit break primals it, it may allow us to go into high level content like the magnitudes and the team on malice and this ruffle stomp but unfortunately right now it just doesn't have enough damage to hit those peaks um I, this is the full list if you have any questions leave them in the comments I, i've been here for 20 minutes so um i'm gonna end the video here thank you guys for watching um just keep in mind if you have any questions just leave them in the comments thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye